Stephen Hawking died in 2018. It wasn't long afterwards that news broke about his supposedly groundbreaking final theory, posthumously published by his collaborator Thomas Hertog. Since then, Hertog has given countless interviews, appeared on podcasts and has written a book. And every couple of weeks someone asks me what's with Hawking's final theory? Will it soon be testable? So here we go. Stephen Hawking made several important contributions to theoretical physics. He did some early work on gravitational waves. His most influential work was without doubt his calculation that showed that black holes emit radiation. After that, his interests seem to have moved from astrophysics to cosmology. Hawking's last theory is about cosmology, the study of our universe in its entirety. It seems that in his later life, Hawking became convinced that science can explain why our universe is the way it is and that God doesn't exist. I was never quite sure how much of this he actually believed and how much he just said because he knew that the media would love it. More than once, I've heard other physicists say that he needed the money that his public appearances made to cover his medical bills. True or not, I think that this was why physicists didn't publicly criticize Hawking's stranger proclamations, such as that black holes don't exist. His last theory is a type of multiverse based on an idea called eternal inflation. This idea has it that our universe isn't the only one. Instead, there are constantly and eternally new universes bubbling out of a rapidly expanding infinite sea of quantum fluctuations. This rapid Rapidly expanding quantum C is the eternal inflation, and you can test it for yourself at home if you put a hand wash detergent into a dishwasher, as I once did. Eternal inflation and other multiverses are popular among physicists who have totally lost touch to reality. They think that if they can write down equations for other universes, then the other universes exist. By that logic, my grocery list should have manifested a fully stocked fridge by now. Hawking and Hertog's contribution to that now was a new theoretical idea for how universes are born out of this multiverse in a more gradual and less disruptive way. The papers called a smooth exit from eternal inflation. The problem with all multiverse ideas is that they're unfalsifiable and therefore unscientific. Some physicists claim that these ideas are falsifiable, but this is because they make up so-called predictions, which they can easily change should they actually be falsified. Hertog has followed this script by claiming that this particular idea is testable because it predicts the creation of gravitational waves right after our universe was born. These primordial gravitational waves, as they're called, were then a Affect the creation of the cosmic microwave background, CMB for short. Concretely, they'd give rise to a polarization pattern in the CMB that we could measure. Just a week ago, he wrote, precision observations of gravitational waves, for instance, may reveal signatures of some of the branchings that the early universe underwent. If spotted, Hawking's cosmological finale may well prove to be his greatest scientific legacy. You might might remember there was some commotion about a potential discovery of the CMB polarization in 2014 from an experiment called BICEP2. This measurement then turned out to be due to dust in the Milky Way, but there are still experiments looking for it. Hertog has, to my best knowledge, not quantified exactly what the observational signature would look like, though that could be done. Maybe he knows that it'd be pointless because suppose we found this CMB pattern and we were reasonably sure it was caused by gravitational waves, what would we learn from that? Well, we'd learn that there were gravitational waves in the early universe. It wouldn't tell us anything about their origin. There are loads of theories for how you could produce the same gravitational wave pattern and the moment there is only a hint of a discovery. 
theoretical physicists will come up with some hundred more theories. And if experiments don't find them, then they'll suddenly understand why multiverses actually don't predict them. What's even worse is that Hertog claims that this explains something about our own universe. You see, the idea is that because in this multiverse all possible combinations of constants of nature can come about, this explains why our universe has these particular combinations of constants. In physics, an explanation means that it's a quantifiably simpler way to calculate measurement outcomes. You can tell that no one can calculate anything useful with this groundbreaking theory because if it was useful, then someone would be using it. Though I suppose turning equations into speaking engagements is a kind of practical application, just not the one that Hawking had in mind. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their data science courses, which they just released. They all use real-world examples, like what it means to go viral on X. Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on algebra or large language models, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.